Well, hi, and thanks for joining me in my shop where I'm working on this uh, radio over here. And I'm going to be testing the tubes in it at this point. I already know the audio section appears to work. And obviously the high voltage supply, power supply, must be working um, through the audio section of the uh, of the radio. What I don't know about are these these radio tubes. The radio is not producing <clears throat> not producing anything. So I think I'll just run through these what is it five tubes there and test them. And I thought I'd do it on camera. Um, often I do these off camera. But I thought well maybe today I'll do it on camera. I'll give you an idea of uh, what's involved. Now my camera is a little wobbly because my camera tripod is extended. Um, kind of high up in the air here, so it's a little wobbly. But, uh, <clears throat> so this is the tester that we'll use. It's a great tube tester. There are different, let's call it levels of tube testers. And uh, the very simple ones that just make sure the filament heats up and the bit of current will flow through the tube to more complex ones, which will actually provide signals into the tube and measure <clears throat> the effect of the tube on the signals. So this is more of the second type. Um, this one really tests the tubes quite thoroughly. So turn it on. And get her warming up. We'll pull out our first victim here. Interesting. Back here where it came from, there's a grounding tab for the shield and the tab was pushed aside there. So I I think the shield was not properly grounded on this. Now, how am I going to get the tube out of here? <laughs> hmm. Here it comes. I don't want to bend the pins, but there's not much else to... And what I'm doing is I'm trying to sort of open the, the shield cover here a little bit and relieve some of the pressure so I can slide the tube out. Here it comes. Oh, it looks like a 6AL5 to me. 6AL5, okay. So to test a 6AL5, the first thing we always do is make sure the filament voltage is low right now. It's 1.5 because you test the tube with a high filament voltage and then leave this. Come back to it the next day. This might be set on you know 35 and you pop in a 12 volt tube and it's goodbye to the tube before you know it. So always, filament voltage is low right now. That's good. So we'll dial it in on here, 6AL5. So here's all the tubes this guy will test. 6AL5 is a dual tube, so it actually has two tests for it. So filament voltage, we'll just set all these things now. 6.3, signal. What's happened to me? Oh, signal. When they put a D here, it means this signal control is not used because the tube is a diode, so it doesn't require the signal control. No signal is put through a diode in the test. Yeah, each one of these machines is different, and you have to learn the idiosyncrasies of operating these machines. A good one will have the manual like this. And it explains in quite a bit of detail you know, like, you know, how it operates and everything, because to be a good tube testing person, you really got to understand what's going on in the tube. Yeah, you can just put it in and get a yes and no out of it, but it's better to understand much much more fully what is going on in the tube you're testing and how, how the tester reads it. Um, you know what they say, the best uh, test for a tube is to put it in a radio and see if it works, and that's true. <clears throat> because tubes can test bad or good <clears throat> Excuse me, on a tester and work or not work in the circuit that they're going in. So back to what we're doing here. So bias left at zero. And now we put the selector switches K3761. K3761. Two P00. Two P00. So this sets up the wiring to the sockets based on the tube you've got. We'll double check. K3761, K3761, 6AL5, 2P00, sensitivity, sensitivity 39. And by setting this control, 
it uh, sets the uh, calibration of the meter. Okay, we apply the plate voltage to E. No, to A. What am I doing there? Pretty easy to make a mistake. So we do a P1, K1. And then a P2, K2. And test it. I don't know what this is telling me here. 6AL5. Oh, the next one's a 6AL6. You know, I didn't notice that. Okay, okay. So I thought the 6AL5 was in here twice because it's two tubes in one. But what they've done is they simply put it in once and then you flip a couple switches to test this side or that side. And I was looking down at the 6AL6 thinking, what is going on? The settings are all different. How can that possibly be? So, yeah, easy to get confused at any moment, you know, unless you do this all day, every day. So I think we're set now. We've got the right voltage. Let's plug it in. All these different sockets to choose from. This is the one we're going to use. Give it a few moments to warm up. Check the line voltage setting here. Bit high. There we go. Now the tube should be warmed up enough. The first test we want to do is a leakage test to see if there's any uh, leaking, any ability for current to leak between the elements inside the tube. We just do that by simply rotating this switch here. Watch the meter. And the meter really didn't go up. The touch there, but I don't think that's important at all. We're looking for it to go way up. No leakage. So now we have this set to tube test. We're ready to test. Here's the rectifier and diode switch. And this is set P1, K1. Here we go. Hmm. That's not very good. That didn't seem very good. Can you see that in the camera? We get too much light on it. Maybe too much light here. Let's try it again. See, it just goes up a little bit. <laughs> That's not so good. Okay, so we'll try the other half now. P2, K2. It's, wow. Okay, what have I got done wrong here? 6AL5, 6.3 on the heater. Man. And the meter sensitivity. I think that's a bad two. Gee, let me see if I can find some more 6AL5s. Just uh, hold a four here for a second. Okay, so I managed to find a few 6AL5s there to choose from. Let's try another one and see if we get the same or different reading. Just make sure that's a 6AL5. That doesn't look like a 6AL5. No way, that's not a 6AL5. I'm looking inside the two. I don't know what this is. It's the right size. But that's not a 6AL5. Okay, so that looks like a 6AL5 to me inside there. And uh, there it is, 6AL5, it says right there, Rogers 2. Pull that out, put that in. Put this one back on the radio here. I'm confused about what's what. And what about this mystery one here? Oh. I'm rotating it very slowly and looking for any hint of the label. There's there's the label right in there. But you know what? It's it's been washed off pretty well. Well, if that's a six AL five, it's a, it's a totally new design inside. Uh, doesn't look at all like your usual six AL five. So I think it's something else. Okay, so the tube should be warmed up. Okay, we'll perform the leakage test. Nothing there. Test. That's better. It needs to get up to this line here. 
can't maybe see it, but in the meter, it, there's a line that says diode's okay above this amount. So, and we'll test the other side. So we, we might have had a bad tube there right from the start. This guy's good, so we'll take out... Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> we'll take out... We'll take out the bad guy. I think... Oh, for crying out loud. See that? I banged my head and lost my mind. I have to put this back in. <laughs> see which tube is doing. So I was saying something about it. it's so easy to get confused. You know what? It's so easy for me to get confused. I think that's the issue here. Pretty slow to heat up. Yeah. I think that's the bad one. This is the good one. So I'm going to just put the shield on lightly at the top and put it back in. And I know for sure I've tested this one and put a good one in. And the bad tube, hmm. Here's what we do with that. I gotta go. I'll be right back in two seconds. Okay, so what we do is we take the bad one and then an unimportant area of the two and I put a big X on it. With an indelible marker, oop, banging my head again, and uh, that tube won't get mixed up in our good stuff again. So, well that's one tube done. Hmm. Should we test the radio already? No, I think we should just carry on. Do the next tube here. If I knew what it was, I would test it right in the shell, but because I don't have a schematic and there's no tube chart, I gotta look to see what it is. It's hard to uh, open the, sh the shell here and not be squeezing the tube so hard you can't slide it out anyway. Even if I can stretch it up here, I can do it. it does not want to let go. Let's try tooling it a bit. Must be an easier way of doing this. Gee, you wouldn't think these metal things are grips onto glass so hard, but. The other thing is too, when you're sliding this tube through here, it's it's rubbing everything off of it. <laughs> oh, it smokes. I don't think I've ever had such a hard time with something like this. There we go. 6 AM 6. Rogers. 6 AM 6. Okay, six, so the voltage should be six like it is, so always keeping an eye on this filament voltage all the time. The pins got bent, oh, from me, tugging away on it there, and it bent the pins. Not the best thing. Bending the pins, you're stressing the metal to glass seal down here. And it can take a fair bit of bending, that's for sure, but you take a risk every time you bend them. 6 AM8. Let's dial that up. 6 A. 
6 a.m. 8. Uh, looks like two settings. Oh, there's something very unusual about this tube. Some kind of a, maybe it's a dual tube, dual package tube. I can't see inside very well. Doesn't look like it. It seems to have two settings on the tube tester, so it's probably a dual function tube. And that second setting is very unusual. I've never seen anything like that. So 6.3, correct. Signal 8, bias 17L, 17L. 15476. 15476. 3002. 3002. The sensitivity to 37. The uh, plate is F. Okay, now this gives actual reading, a rejection point. Is 1140 micromoles, and you multiply the scale reading by four in order to read that amount. That's how this is set up. Okay, so we can plug them in. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Holy <laughs> jumper! What happened there? Man, okay. <laughs> Yikes. What the frig happened there? Okay, I got to guess. You know what I didn't do? I think I just fried this tube. I don't think I double checked these. Oh, I hate to do this, man. Now, now, I'm, now I'm really teaching you how to make mistakes here, I'm pretty sure. Let's go through it again. Oh, boy. Okay. 6.3. Okay, the heater is 6.3, so that certainly wasn't 6.3 on the heater there. Signals 8, 17L. Okay, here's the killer. 15, 4, 7, 6. 1, 5, 4, 7, 6. Okay, down below. 3002. 3002. EP is F. What happened here? I have never seen a tube go like that. I, I, I don't understand at all what just happened. Let's go through it one more time. 6 AM 8. 6.3. Now I'm freaked right out. Signal 8. Bias 17L. Is this really a 6 AM 8? Oh, I can certainly read 6 AM 8 on there. It's as clear as a bell. Oh. Okay. It's 6 AM 6. And just to add difficulty here, it's not listed in this chart. Oh, what a stupid situation I'm in now. <laughs> okay. So. Let's review my error. <laughs> I pick up a tube and I look at it and I see an 8 where I should see a 6. I then look on the tube chart and sure enough I find there is an 8. There is a 6 a.m. 8, so I'm encouraged. There isn't a 6 a.m. 6 there to even catch my eye and make me wonder. So off I go on my merry way, almost certainly applying plate voltage to the heater on this. That's almost certainly what happened there. Now. Did I blow this tube? Well, there's only one way to tell, and that's to put it in the tube tester and test it. And this tube tester won't test it, for crying out loud. How do you like that? Somewhere there's some supplemental, supplemental information here. Uh, it's not in the back of the book here. What is this list in the back of the book anyway? <sighs> Let's 
See, the you know, problem with these tube testers when they have the roll chart, if, if they wanted to update the roll chart, it became a huge hassle. So they would issue uh, notes to people who own the tube testers with additional settings. But unfortunately, 6AM6 6 6 doesn't show up. Well, hey, it's a good thing I put this on video because I'm getting a great lesson in what not to do. First, don't misread your tube number. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's gonna lead to trouble. So okay, let's put this away. We'll leave them out. And then we better stick them in there. And next thing you know, I won't know which tube goes where. Because remember, I have no tube chart. Let's go on and fry the next tube. Let's fry up the next tube. Let's fry them up. I have another tube tester. Maybe it'll do a six AM eight. That's what I'm thinking. Six. B A six B A six. Very, very common tube. Six B A six. Now demonstrating that I do learn from my mistakes, I will now observe this with a magnifying glass. Yeah, no doubt about it. Six B A six. Okay. So roll the chart to six B A six. Very common radio tube. Six B A six there it is okay it's definitely a 6ba6 6. no mistakes being made here 6.3 signal 4 bias is 10 l 5 no, 5.2763 5.2763 now maybe a lesson here for me, and I've realized this all along, is uh, tube testing is in itself a risky business. Everything you do in these old radios carries a bit of a risk that you'll damage the thing you're trying to fix. Or in my case, blow it right up. <laughs> okay, EP is C. I better concentrate on what I'm doing here. Or I'll make another boo-boo. Times three, 960 is the uh, micro Mohs. It's got PE written here. What's PE? PE. Yeah. Pentagrid converter or something like that. Let's see. In here is the uh, short form PE. Pentode section of tube being tested. So, 6BA6. 5276-3. Forty one hundred, forty one hundred, and six point three. Okay, I think we're good. Everybody ready for the excitement now? As I plug this in, that uh, that thing that happened to the last tube uh, of all the tubes I've tested over the years, that's the first time I've ever had a tube turn into a light bulb on my tube tester. Yeah, I could damage the tube tester like that too. So uh, hopefully the tube tester is still working. It's got a fuse over here, but I didn't blow it. Okay, let's check for shorts. No shorts. And here we go on the GM test. Oh my gosh, it's not even showing up. It's another dud. Oh man, is my tube tester shot? Am I testing the tube or am I testing the tube tester? Uh, better better put that 6AL5 back in and see if we get the same. Uh, we're going to have to do that. Or find another 6BA6. Why don't we find another 6BA6? That's a much better idea, I think. Okay, 6BA6. I'll have to rummage my stuff. Oh, 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 oh. I'll have to rummage my stock for a minute and uh, find one. Okay. <laughs> I found a 6BA6 amidst a whole bunch of 12BA6s. So I got one 6BA6. Let's just double check. It's, it's hardly moving upscale at all. 
and you're supposed to read 960 times 3 so that should be coming up to up in this range well 960 times 3 maybe that's not quite as bad let's put let's put another one in so here goes a 6BA6 is it really a 6BA6 <laughs> Can't be double checking enough. 6BA6. I also found a 6BE6 anticipating another tube in there. So this is the one that came from the radio. We'll put it back there. No leakage. Very important to do the leakage test because uh, if you have a leaky tube and you uh, run it through your tube tester, you could damage your tube tester. But then I know all about damaging tube testers. No, I. So here we go. Let's hope this goes way up. Oh my god. Oh, what a situation, eh? If your instrument is in question, you don't know if it's the instrument or if it's the item under test. Oh man, I'm very, very upset. Shame on me for videoing this too. <laughs> You're seeing the. Uh, oh. Man, I need a tube I know for sure is perfectly good. I'll have to fire up my other tube tester here. Maybe that's what I'll need to do. I'll have to run this tube through the other tube tester. And see if it complies with the very low reading here. If not, then I got another thing to fix. I gotta fix my own tube tester. Oh, what an idiot. Oh, man. Oh, well. <laughs> Such is life. Stuff happens when you're having fun. You know, sometimes, frankly, I wonder if making these videos, because uh, it splits my attention all the time, if, if uh, if it's really the fault of the video that uh, things go wrong in my shop. Yeah, yeah, I'm one step away from blaming it right on you as the viewer. <laughs> it's all your fault. It's your fault I make these mistakes. Well, it's not getting any better, is it? Okay, I gotta go a little ways to get my other tube tester going. I have to get my chart up on my tablet, so hang on. I'll be back.